Come on. Oh, did I kick myself out? one so let me let me pop over the old shared screen here
a happy belated Mother's Day as well to any mothers that are on the line. All right, quick attendance. Daniel Johnson, I am here. Colin Gillespie. Nothing from Colin. Denise. I'm here. Can you hear me? Sorry, my computer's going crazy right now. Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you, Denise. Welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining. Uh, Dan Firestone. There is a growing bitterness here. I'm offended that regional partners are pursuing their own interests. Okay. Daniel Gillespie here. Hey, Colin. Welcome. Thanks. I think we have the same light fixture. You can't see mine, but I think it's the same. Uh, Ken Livingston. Here. Welcome, Ken. Paul Hogan. I thought I saw Paul on the line. Paul, you might be on mute. So I'll hey, sorry. Up. Hello, I'm here. here. Perfect. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Jill Morawski. Here. Ryan Nobrega. Present. Present. Even better. And Sandy Fry. Here. <clears throat> Thank you, Sandy. So we have a quorum. This is who's in attendance at 7.03 p.m. Uh, let's jump to minutes real quick. So these are posted on the town site. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to review. Any objections to the minutes as they're posted from the commission members? Say objections, or I think the word is say nay, if you do not agree with the minutes as they're posted. All right, take silence as approval. Approved 7.04 p.m. Great. So next on the agenda is we actually have the updates on trailway, updates on roadways and trail projects. So first, I want to welcome um, Carol Waxman and Pramod Pradhan on the call. Before I have you guys give us an update on the St. Bridget School campus, I'm just going to check with the commission on what was provided for updates on roadways and trail projects. So just bear with us for a couple more minutes here. So as a group, so right now, um, after speaking with Dwayne Martin on Farmington Avenue, West Harvard Center has been modified to accommodate more outdoor dining. If you have not been down that road or the center in a while, check it out. A lot of restaurants are busy. It's really nice to see people out masking when they should for the most part and enjoying the outdoor space. I think it's much more clear that LaSalle is a one-way travel lane now as well. Other updates are the Fern Street, um, so the bridge project, the town finally received the uh, state and town permit. Uh, timing is expected to occur after the more North Main Street Road Diet trial. Um, the sidewalk gap was closed, so if you go down Fern Street heading uh, west, there was a sidewalk gap to hit Mountain Road. That has now been closed. That is a Mary Ellen Thibodeau initiative. So just a, a fantastic extension of the sidewalk there. So if you're a resident on that street, thank you for, for letting that happen. And if you are a pedestrian or a cyclist who use the sidewalk, check that out. Um, permanent insulation for Four Mile Avenue. So right now this is a one way, depending on which way you enter Four Mile. They're expected late summer to make that a permanent installation. Dwayne had a meeting with Riggs Avenue residents last week. I do not have an update on that. 
LaSalle Road, uh, barriers are installed a little bit similar to, to the Farmington Avenue project. Um, so Mountain Road has some interesting discussion for um, north of uh, Main Street, um, there is potential for a continuous five foot bike lane on the northbound direction on Mouth Road, Mountain Road, and close to the same width southbound, um, except for approaching southbound. So some expected designs coming up for Mountain Road. So have your radar ready for Mountain Road when that time comes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I think we've already reviewed that design and we protested we didn't think they followed complete streets because they eliminated the sidewalk we were happy about the bike lane but they were taking out the sidewalk i don't i i would be surprised if the design is changing at this point i think it's just moving through the process to construction so this is in the intersection this is actually mountain road so where the, the commission was the removal of the sidewalk on the intersection, this is actually what's labeled as a bike lane, which we all know is not a bike lane, but the yeah. potential for expanding that, um, that buffer zone. Okay, so from where to where, is that part of a repaving or? Um, it is part of sliver widening east side of Mountain Road, maybe, I don't think Dwayne Martin's on the call. Um, he covered it quickly. So that's going to be the east side of Mountain Road. So I think I have that. It's around Sobe. It's around, the, I, I think that's what it is. They've <clears throat> dug up all the curbs and probably four feet yeah. in to property lines around Sobe on the opposite side of the street. I don't know if that's what you were talking about, Coast, but maybe 50 feet, 100 feet. So what I can do is ask for clarification, right? Yeah, that would yeah. be good to know where that is. Yeah, maybe it's in your roadway repaving. Does that say what the extent is? Oh, West Maxwell to Glenwood Road. Yeah, that's what I had. So sliver widening east side of Mountain Road, north of Main Street though. Um, North of Fern, do you mean? Yeah. It doesn't go. Yeah. yeah, that could be my typo, so I want to put that out there on me speed typing. Uh, but, it's, but it's actually south of. It's North actually Pompano. south of. Yeah, so I'll get clarification on that and provide an update. Does that work for the commission? Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. All right, green. So New Park Avenue, they're expected to have preliminary design. I'm sorry, everyone's probably going blind for the, oh, too far. So for New Park Avenue, they expect to have preliminary design done by mid-June. Daniel? Yep. I We may have a question because we're only seeing your PowerPoint. Are you showing something else? I'm just realizing you may be. Oh, thanks, Ken. <laughs> yep. Appreciate it. So, you know, full awareness. If everybody has, thinks I'm missing showing something, then please stop me. It's new glasses. That's, I'll blame the new glasses. Is that, is that better? All right. So New Park Avenue. Excuse me, Daniel, can you make that any larger? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So the town expects to have preliminary designs complete by June 16th at which point a public information meeting will be held. So keep an eye on New Park Avenue. Uh, we'll get awareness on that as well. Just again on your radar. 
North Main Street, uh, so the North Main Street, this is on the bridge side. The bridge project is on schedule with end of June completion date. Uh, right now, North Main Street Road Diet, the state is reviewing the timing and phasing of traffic lights. Town has obtained quotes for signage materials um, at 5,000, and that would actually be installed by the town, and payment markings at roughly 26,000 for a contractor to complete. Tropper Trail, so this is being led by Jim Brennan. Um, they're still working on phases five and six, and right now it's pending a few more signatures with expected updates coming soon. That's all I have on the upcoming roadway projects. Let me just switch my screen here. So jumping back, uh, we also have, like I mentioned earlier, so we have Carol Waxman and Pramod Pradhan on the phone. They're going to talk to us a little bit about the St. Bridget School, which is the campus on Mayflower Street. It runs, it's right next to Beachland Park. So Carol or Pramod, are you on the line? Yes, we are. All right, the floor is yours. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I'm Carol Waxman. I'm the Interim Library Director of the West Hartford Public Library, and I'm here with Pramod Pradhan, our Community Engagement Librarian. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the project, and then Pramod and I are so happy to answer any questions that we can. The so West Hartford Town Council has voted to authorize Town Manager Matt Hart to purchase the former St. Bridget School campus at 100 Mayflower Street in Elmwood for $3 million and transform the property into a new community and cultural center. Due to demographic shifts resulting in low enrollment over the last seven years, uh, several years, excuse me, that have created financial shortfalls, the parish is unable to continue its financial support of the school resulting in its closure. The campus includes a school and one other building built in 1960 that sit on 8.5 acres and are strategically located adjacent to the beautiful Beachland Park. The new community and cultural center will accommodate the Elmwood Senior Center, the Elmwood Community Center, the daycare center, the Fax and Branch Library, and possibly a gym and meeting rooms. The estimated investment in the project is $6 million. The property was most recently appraised at just over $7 million. The St. Bridget location offers the possibility of a new Elmwood campus combining a number of uses and allowing us to repurpose the existing Elmwood Community Center for redevelopment and grand list growth. Most of our Elmwood-based assets would be in this one new location. The present Elmwood Community Center and the Fax and Branch Library, as you know, are very old buildings in need of much updating in terms of HVAC, interior design, functionality, parking, and access to buildings from the street. Minor repairs and updates have been done but this continues to become more difficult. Due diligence, which includes a comprehensive analysis of the existing structure, in particular zoning, environmental, and physical inspections, as well as a property survey and title search, is being done to the same Bridget buildings to determine if they will be remodeled or raised. The buildings are 61 years old and have been vacant for a few years. The property is valuable in terms of its location adjacent to a wonderful park, which leads to endless opportunities for recreation. The community will all be invited to express their ideas for the design of the building, as well as to what they would like to see happen inside the building. A new community center would offer so many opportunities for the residents of the Elmwood neighborhood and the entire town 
This center would offer programs for babies, elementary age children, teens, families, and seniors. There are many exciting things that we could do with this property to serve residents of all ages for decades to come. And we know it would be a place where everyone would meet to engage in conversation and programming, education, and socialization. Thank you. That concludes my report, but please ask questions if you have any. Thank you very much, Carol. Sure, Dan. Promote it. Is there anything you would like to say that I have not? No, I mean, you, you have covered most of, uh, I mean, everything, but just to add on to what you have said is, uh, you know, we, the community, as I've spoken to uh, uh, most of our community members around uh, Elmwood, is very supportive uh, of this project. Uh, and the, the, the St. Bridget location, which is, you know, around Vine Hill, Portland, Elmhurst, Park Place, Yale, and Somerset. You know, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, folks from these locations that come to the Elmwood Community Center and uh, the library. Uh, so, you know, we're all excited to have uh, this new project and a new building, um, you know, in this location. And, uh, yeah, as you said, you know, the, the existing structures that we have uh, in Elmwood, uh, for the Elmwood Senior Center, or Elmwood Community Center, in fact, and we're getting older, uh, and it, it's a lot more expensive to, uh, you know, uh, maintain those as compared to having a new structure. And also, you know, talking to uh, the Bicycle Commission, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's right in the blue circle. So, you know, I, I ride along that circle, and uh, it will be exciting to have this location in the bike path. Thank you, Pramod. I, I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> um, Carol, you sent the estimate for renovating is $3 million, <clears throat> but then you said the building might be torn down, right? Um, Depending on what the due, dil dil due diligence tells us, they will either keep the existing structure and just refurbish it with all new systems or take it down. So that has yet to be studied. We're waiting for uh, the due diligence is happening now, and then we have to wait for the engineers and construction people and everybody else to give their recommendations on what to do. Okay. <clears throat> it's just that it will be a lot more than a $6 million project if you rebuild, correct? Yes, that is true. And the money will be raised, and yeah, that is, that is true. And what is but being done with the old property? So I believe that the old properties will probably go up for sale for redevelopment. Uh, Promote, am I correct on that? That's correct. So, uh, yeah, those two properties will be put in the market for sale. And the only other question I have is, I'm sure you've thought of this, but this is um, for the elderly and people who do not have personal transportation. This is a little out of the way of the other, the current site. And are you considering rerouting bus, bus routes, or um, what are the plans to get people there? Okay. Yes, you are correct, and, and I have discussed this with the town manager, and we're talking about possible van transportation. We don't want anybody left out. We want people to be able to come, and we know that it's it's a longer walk, and it's also a walk through busy intersections, and you know, not exactly a, the safest walk. Um, Great. <laughs> so they, they are they are still they are studying this carefully and making sure that people will get there and get home. We want everybody to come. Will Thank there you. be walking access to the to the St. Bridget's site from uh, Beachland Park? Is there a connection there? It seems like that would open up more area to good access, biking and walking access? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I will definitely bring that up. I do not know, but I, I will ask that question and I will let Dan know the answer and may, perhaps he can get that information back to you. Yeah, this is from old. Um, so uh, yeah, right now there is an access from the, the swimming pool 
outside of the Beachland Park. Uh, there is a little access. I don't know how, if that's going to be continued or not, but there is an access currently uh, to the location from the Beachland site. Promote, are you saying that if you're, if you drive, if you ride a bike or walk to Beachland Park, you can just continue on and get into the St. Bridget campus? That's correct. Okay, so that that would be the answer. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think to Sandy's point, and for your follow up, uh, Carol is, you know, I live right near here, and and. Um, Honestly, I didn't know there was a school here until uh, <laughs> until I was at the playground, and you can peek yeah. through the bushes to the school. So, right. I think what Sandy's trying to address is, and and Sandy, let me know if, if I'm going the right direction. But a a marked, visible, and easily accessible walking path be, uh, or linkage between the park and the school, if on for consideration. Uh, yeah, well, I will definitely find that out for you. Yeah, it's kind of an odd location because I would call that a flag lot. It has a driveway leading back to it with all the property behind those houses right at the street. So it's um It, it is, is obliterated, it is I hidden. agree. It's hard to see it from this I agree with you. It's hard to see from the street. And I would imagine the people who have trees shielding them from <laughs> from that school, they don't want those trees to go away. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge. And then Mayflower Street is definitely a different kind of street than Quaker in terms of access. But I don't know how much and, and New Britain Avenue to the Faxon branch. So those would all be questions like wanting to be assured that for people who are walking or biking to this new location that um, Mayflower Street can adequately handle them, people can come in from, from the back from Beachland. Of course, and I believe, of course, that's part of the due diligence of the whole project too. So who makes because the decision on this? Is this a council decision? Yes, I, I know that the council has already, well, they voted to authorize the town manager to purchase the campus. So that's just the first step. Uh, Promo, do you have any more information than, than that? Uh, no, I think, that, you know, that's it because now they have, they're doing the study on the property and uh, so we're just waiting for the study, but that's it. The, uh, the council has already approved for the purchase of the property. As all of us know, in West Hartford, the town is very um, grown, and there is not a lot of land or a lot of buildings to, to repurpose. It's difficult to find sites that work. So when this, when this property came up, I believe there was a lot of excitement about the possibilities. I'm curious if they considered, <clears throat> granted, there would be a period where no one had any facility, but just tearing down the old Elmwood Community Center and building a new building right there. They already own the land. That is true, but there's always been problems with access to that building from that side street. And and I know you're probably going to say, well, so this is a side, kind of a side street and the same thing. I don't know what the difference would be, but that's one of the reasons that they brought that I was told that they're not going to to do anything with that with the old Elmwood Community Center they want a new site I, I'm sure there'll be a lot more opportunities for public forum and public questions and all as um, this project moves along we're just in the very beginning just to let you know what we know yeah and and Carol I I apologize when you first introduced yourself I was flipping through screen screen. So do you mind just, you know, restating uh, you and Pramod, you know, how, how are you involved in this so we can follow up and, and just for the general group awareness? Of course. So we're part of the library administration and because the Faxon branch is involved because that branch will be moving into the new community and cultural center. 
So I'm the interim library director. I'm I'm the children's services librarian, but acting as the library interim director right now. So I'm wearing two hats. So I was asked to speak to community groups and promote is our community engagement librarian. So this is perfect for him, right, promote? Absolutely, yes. Right, community also, engagement. So that's why we yeah. are with you tonight. Promote, you're about to say something else as well? Yeah, and also I am based at FAXA. So, and, you know, this is one of the locations that's going to be moved to uh, this lo new location. So that's how we are involved in this project. Thank you. I guess the question I have for later discussion, just for follow up too, is, you know, residents may be closer to Hanuk. Uh, have you guys spoke with residents on moving this faction branch farther west from that West Hartford um, town line and, and access yes. for those residents who use Faxon? Definitely. We, uh, you know, this was uh, on one of my top concerns because we have a lot of folks that come from the Hillcrest neighborhood uh, where Hanoff is located. Uh, and also uh, the town has also uh, talked about providing a couple of times a day bus service to this new location uh, and also increasing the activity in Hanok location as well. Have just out of curiosity, you know, any precursor discussions for improving the sidewalks and that accessibility to this new location? I have not heard that, Dan, but I can certainly bring that up. I'm not. A, are you aware that they, there definitely need to be improvements made because you're in that area? Yeah. What you know? Uh, there's a gap. There's like an industrial, a commercial, um, commercial real estate gap between actual houses, um, and then getting to Faxon currently. And I know there's some discussions on improving the fast track accessibility right at New Park. But right. going under that bridge and and there's a lot of accessibility concerns there, especially when it comes winter time. That is a very dangerous bridge underpass and a very right. dangerous location. And right. the the Trout Brook Trail might provide an alternative, but I think enhancements to get residents from their homes in and to the new location would, would be really important just to make sure i don't think they need to walk on new britain avenue to get there if they can get to the tropical trail in a much better way and, and more safe right dan these are excellent suggestions if you feel like you want to email these to the town manager i think he would welcome the opportunity to hear from you yep appreciate it sure uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. This is from Ola again. And uh, absolutely, Dan, I agree 100% that if we can have some kind of, uh, you know, bike uh, route coming from Hillcrest to the Trout Brook Trail uh, in the New Park uh, Avenue, I mean, that will be an excellent, excellent alternative uh, to this whole project. Yeah. Great. Um, I don't have any other questions. A lot of it's just follow-up stuff, so appreciate everyone's time on that. Any other questions from the commission for Carol and Pramod? All right. Well, both of you, thank you for joining. Thanks for jumping on the agenda. I apologize. I saw your email today, and I know you sent it last week. So when I when I send out the massive emails, I get a little bit of, of flood coming back so I, I missed that so thank you both for joining so quickly no problem thank you for the opportunity everybody take care thank you have a good one bye 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 thank you thank you, thank you very much bye -bye. sure bye bye all right um, welcome back so the next on the agenda is the North Main Street public meeting 
I know some of us were able to attend. Does anybody on the commission want to talk about that quick? Sandy, would you be able to pick that up? I know you're there. Or anyone else who's able to attend? I was, but... Yeah, I can, I can talk a little bit. I thought the meeting went really well. I think we were all sort of braced for people who were going to push back against a road diet and push back against um, facilities for bicyclists, but none of that happened. Um, it, it all seemed pretty positive. I thought the presentation went well, was understandable what they were talking about. Um, and, you know, we've all seen what's proposed, which is to have five foot shoulders or bike lanes from Fern Street North and then south of Fern Street, a five foot shoulder on the west side, three foot shoulder on the east side. And if the main if the road diet is successful, then they'll push the curb back on the east side, south of Fern to um install to have five foot shoulders on both sides and i think we've been sort of agnostic about whether that five foot shoulder has to be labeled initially as a bike lane or not yep yep the i, I thought i went really well as too um i think vhp had a great moderator in there as well to field the questions that came from residents and, and people on the line. For those of you on the call, if you Google West Hartford North Main Street Road Diet, it will get you to the town website. You can rewatch that public information here. There's also live comments in there as well to recap. And anything else on that, Sandy? I just want to make sure we covered that because it, it's been a huge discussion. It, I don't see any objections for it going forward at this point. It is going to happen, it sounded like, um, towards the end of June. And at this point, as a commission, I think we should consider our approach when this road diet trial is going on and what can we do to make sure we stay engaged with people in the community and the trial itself. Any thoughts on the survey, Daniel, around the road diet trial when it happens? You know, we got a really good feedback on the the bicycle survey. I'm not sure if we can yeah, get some. We're, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna jump into that next too. So perfect intro. Um, speaking of the survey, we did follow up with VHB on their survey. I don't know if you've had a, anyone's had a chance to take their survey, but the when you do, uh, it doesn't give a great backstory to the North Main Street Road Diet of what it's intended for. So we did reach out to VHP. Uh, we say we, I say myself um, and Sandy as well on on the survey uh, because it some of the questions were a bit. Uh, what was I looking for? It, they directed the the road diet for a specific purpose of bike lanes, and that's the reason it's happening when it's when it's general safety for motorists, pedestrians, and cyclists. So we did have questions about the survey that was presented by VHB. Yeah, and I talked to Dwayne about it also, and what the town ended up doing, and you can see it on this web page now. It used to be the survey was right at the top of the web page. So okay. you could click on the survey without having any background information. Now the survey is further down. I still think the survey itself should have had a little more introduction because it didn't really pose the issues that this is about, this is a safety um, intervention, concern about pedestrian safety and motorist safety. And um, as you read the questions, and I know a couple of people contacted me like, hey, what, what's this survey about? It seemed like it was asking questions. They seem to say the, the road diet is just about accommodating bikes. And so we want to be sure that the after road diet survey does not have those similar kinds of um, emphases that that could be misinterpreted yeah yeah i agree thanks sandy 
All right, I'm going to switch screens here. Any questions on that from the commission so far about the North Main Street Road diet trial public information meeting? No, I, I was unable to attend, but I'm delighted to hear it was positive and upbeat. And yeah. It, that's a big step forward. Yeah. I, I was, it was nice to hear, you know, it was nice to hear residents. Some of their stories obviously were not great um, so far as like what, how it's impacted family and their lives, but it was, it was, I think the participation was strong. And so far as a, a web meeting, Definitely a lot different than the public informations where you could attend in person. Uh, no easels with with big poster boards, but uh, it, it went well. All right, let me. So next. So we have the the bike head survey, which ended, and I want to take time in this meeting to actually go through the survey questions as a commission and work on what we have for understanding of the survey. Kenneth, the only ask I have from you is if we can get a file that is an Excel or a clean PDF, because when I, when I try to just print the PDF from SurveyMonkey, it, it doesn't come very clear. The questions are kind of broken up between a couple pages. So if you have the opportunity to do that, Um, yeah, I thought, okay, I'll, I thought I forwarded you right after our meeting with Dwayne. I forwarded you and Dwayne all the Excel file. Uh, if you did, I missed it, and I'll check on that. I can get it again. But what I'll do in the meantime, I'll share the actual survey uh, on the screen because it's, it's easier to go with on the screen. Hold on, folks. Takes me a minute when I go from my work laptop, which is Windows, to Mac. All right. So the intent of the survey is to, to get the public response. Residents, visitors all took the survey. We have roughly, we have you know, 1,016 answered the first question. So not every question was required. What do we plan to do with this survey is a, a question. Uh, we are gonna place this on the West Hartford Pedestrian and Bicycle Commission town page for people to use as a, as a resource and to look at, but also as a commission, how can we use this survey to, you know, understand what cust uh, customers, sorry, <laughs> understand what uh, residents and visitors feel in town about the facilities that are currently in place, what they want, and I also identify areas that as a commission we might be missing so far as understanding and policies we can we can help move forward. So question one, on average, how often do you bicycle in West Hartford? So here, 49% uh, roughly uh, bike a few times or more a month. So we have, you know, half the respondents using a bicycle in West Hartford more than, you know, twice a month, sorry, once a month or more. Not much to dive into, very surface read, but it shows you a high traffic amount for our infrastructure on roads and or off uh, off roads on trails. It'd be, it'd be interesting to get a benchmark of a healthy bike community. Um, is it 50%? Is it 70? Are we above? Because it's usually 30. Is there something we could compare this to in our goal of becoming even more friendly? Are there benchmarks? It's a great question, Colin. Okay. Ken, if I make comments in here, that's just for us, or is that going to be something that gets shared? Is 
Let's try it out. Sorry, I just talked. It. It's only for people with access via that link. Okay. Now, would that be on a volume, Colin? Like, what? How often they use the facilities, or I don't know if you can answer that question. Maybe there'd be some like for like issues, of course, unless someone's ex asked, uh, asked it in exactly the same way. But you can do it in proxy and say, you know, we have a community where over fifty percent of the people bike based on our proxy, but then there's, so it, it's one way or another, there's some interesting things in here and we just have to understand if it's good or or, uh, or actually really terrible. It should be at 70% to be a great bike town. Yeah, is that something you could take a look at for other comparable communities? Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know if anybody has added any uh, sources for that. I can certainly start to look at best bike communities and start to think of their, because I could also back into it, are there, statistics that, that seem to come up on all those other bike communities and then have we hit on one here and are we lower high? I can look at that. That'd be awesome, thanks. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to know too, I didn't think about that until you said it, right? What, I think 50% is pretty high, but maybe it, it's nothing, uh, oh great, at the post, maybe it's nothing. Yeah, we. you'd have to be careful doing that or what kind of, I'm, Jill's probably gonna jump in here in a second about, the amount of these respondents is, a, is not a, you know, random responses of the community. This is you know, primarily our numbers are probably higher since it's people interested in the topic. So just something to be aware of. Sure. I think it's a good exercise, though, for us to understand. And may, maybe we're asking different questions. So maybe when you work on that, Colin, you know, this, I, I'd like to get this an annual cadence yeah. out to the town. And see if we've made improvements as years come. And we can also work on the question structure. Is one thing I took away too. But yeah, and there's going to be a bunch of. What, yeah, you're right. We can we can even massage our questions to be better in the future if there's ones out there. But just generally throughout, there was this sense of, you know, if if our streets are considered unsafe when we get to that one about walking or, or riding, how does that compare to what an, a benchmark town thinks? But I I, I I don't know where to find that. Look. <laughs> However. Uh, I'm, looking, I'm Daniel. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Daniel. Sound team. Am I allowed to uh, interject a comment or? Um, yeah, yeah, Alan, go ahead. And then Jill. I, I was just going to say that on that question. I mean, it's it's a little bit deceptive because I would think 50 percent. I mean, if I were an anti-bike person, I would say, listen, half your people bike maybe once a month, and people drive their cars every day. So why are you emphasizing bikes? But the other the other side of the question might be, what well, do you want to bike more than you do? I mean, if you don't bike, is there a reason why? Maybe you don't you know you don't care to, that's, that's or coming. maybe you feel unsafe, which is what I mean. I just say anecdotally, plenty of people say that to me all the time. Not just yeah. what's about West Hartford, but just in general, they don't like biking on the streets. Right, and I think what Colin's about to say, we will get there, Alan. There's more there's more questions in the survey. And um, I, I, what you bring is a strong point of, of how we frame the question and, and what other details that we can get for next time around too. So if, if you don't mind, I do believe we get to something to, to what you just asked as well. And then Jill, you're, good, yeah, and Jill, you're about to say something as well. To respond to um, the, the, the several suggestions that we sort of massage or work on the questions and, and connect that to Colin's hope for benchmark. If we are trying to use benchmarks um, and we're going to survey this, get, use this survey over time, we don't want to change the questions. Great. Because we want this survey to be a benchmark of improvement or deterioration, but hopefully improvement, right? Um, so, I, I mean, there may be questions that are just not working we could take out. And maybe mm -hmm. some add, but I think there's some questions that should stay just as they are. Of so we know we're asking the same thing, right? To, over time. Yeah. Um, yep. I mean, in addition to not being a random sample, which I, but what surveys are, right? They assume they are, but they're not. Um, it is really not a very uh, fine. It's not a very large sample, um, which is unfortunate and, and kind of surprising. Um, but if you think that, you know, uh, West Hartford's almost 70,000 people and only 1,000 people responded, 
it's not a good, it's not, not a particularly robust sample. Um, yeah. Yeah. And those definitely takeaways for, for next time we run this to get a bigger sample size. And, you know, I think pi from a pilot program, from not a pilot, but the first time we ran it to get a thousand and with town support on the town website and West Hartford news, we did, we did, I think we did a really great job the first go around. So I, this isn't yeah. the first yeah. survey. This is our second survey. And I, and I would yeah. say, Jill, I would say, Jill, I mean, I'm no statistician, but you know, there's political surveys with four or 500 respondents and they predict the <laughs> entire country, you know? Yeah, so but, from that standpoint, a thousand might not be that bad. <laughs> yes. But think of all those polls that failed to predict. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. I mean, I think it's fine. It gives us, it gives us some, some information i mean that's that's going to be important i think when it comes to the later question i won't hold it up but let's yeah. go because i think the later questions are more important in some way yeah and and what's nice right this will be a, a standing resource on our website for the commission for the town so the more people that want to know will become better engaged for next time when this mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. comes out mm -hmm. again so hopefully that'll have a multiplier uh to it uh without going into a polling conversation let's go back to this mm -hmm. survey um, so the question is what would be your primary purpose for biking in West Hartford now this is a multiple choice question with multiple answers sorry there's multiple answers allowed on this question right so you could select any of these items we could see primarily recreation and enjoyment when I uh, Ken and I had the opportunity to talk to Todd Dumay and Dwayne Martin about the survey. Um, you know, when I see recreation and enjoyment, I think, and, and run errands, right? These are all commerce opportunities. These are working with small businesses. These are um, attractors to the town mm -hmm. so far as the ability to, to do these things at a, at a comfortable level. So I, I I just think this is a, a nice statistic here, statistic, but nice um, response percentage for, for what is there. Um, there are comments in here. Um, I will flip through some of these because I, I don't think, um, you know, these are going to be public, so they're here. And I've checked these. I didn't see any names tagged to anything. So I'm just going to read through a couple of the comments. Again, this is public, so... I, I'd like to be candid with everyone that not everyone has the same feelings that we do, so that's fine. Uh, I'm a pedestrian, get an e-bike, uh, work to school, I don't ride at all. So this, these are just general feedback on this question. Um, I'll save these comments, I'll get into later comments. So question three, please select up to three of the below choices that would cause you to bike more. Again, multiple answers allowed. So you could select all, you could select none. So what would cause you to bike more? <coughs> Overwhelmingly is paved bike paths and then followed closely by um, you know bike lanes at 45.4 percent and then an overwhelming is you know if you if you add the totals you know 75 percent responded related to motorist behavior so slower traffic and more attentive motorists I, i'm not sure you can add these percentages together in this type yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. So these last two, uh, so slower traffic and then more attentive motorists are related to motor vehicle behavior. So thank you, Colin. But but notwithstanding your messaging. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Live and make mistakes, right? So um, so looking at some of the responses was, was interesting here. I'm going to pop these open here. Um, and I'm just going to breeze through some of these. 
Again, this will be available on our site. Mm -hmm. So say for sidewalks, uh, you know, more, you know, <laughs> uh, a well, that, that one is very interesting. More respectful, attentive pedestrians. Mm -hmm. it, pedestrians here, forgive me, are very different from pedestrians like in, in Washington, D.C. or in Amsterdam. They are oblivious to bicycles. <laughs> It is, an, and partially that's because things aren't um, marked enough. But it is amazing how um, that, yeah, there, there's just a different awareness of sort of everybody's sort of role and how you work as salmon in the system. So I thought that was an interesting comment. Are you, are you comparing us to salmon, Colin? <laughs> or something, something that where there's a there's a sense of of movement that flows. Mm -hmm. um, we're erratic. All, all of our different uh, pedestrians, bicycles, and cars are erratic to each other. They don't, there's no sense of flow or understanding. Yeah. When, when you're out in either, any of those modes. Yeah. Yeah. So that comment was interesting. Yeah. I mean, there there are a number of comments in here, and as, as this gets published, public, you know, there's, there's also, which we need to consider, right, driver perception of bikers. Um, and pedestrians and you know one one i don't have it here but i, I grabbed it was uh you know bikers should restrain from public streets right and <laughs> yeah. you know wh but why right like th there's always that question of you know as a motorist what am i trying to do and then how how are and how am i interacting with bicyclists and yeah if 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 they're jumping out in front of my car I, I might be able to, to see that as a nuisance. It depends, it all depends on perspective. So I think the survey does a great job of just reminding us of, of that perspective. Um, so next question, are streets in West Hartford safe to bicycle? Ken, you mind taking this one? Just reviewing this question. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, I guess, it, you know, what it does show is almost 50% of people feel it's unsafe, but you add it with the extremely unsafe, it's close to 60% feel they're not, their roads are not safe for bicycling, um, which kind of goes back to some of our earlier questions and the correlation of that we have about 50% of people that ride, and, and maybe that 50% you could do some cross-referencing of these probably the people that feel it's unsafe or extremely unsafe i mean i think if anything that's one of our potential goals is to increase the feeling of safety within our community because the feeling mm -hmm. of safety is one of the biggest things that discourage people from bicycling and walking and there's a re variety of reasons why someone may feel that but at the base level that's the goal to increase the feeling of safety yep yeah yeah, yeah. I, I forgot I missed this part on this on this question three was where um, Sharrows were, were really far down there so what would cause people to bike more Sharrows were were down towards the bottom and um, hmm. I think we're learning and what I learned from this survey is maybe as a cyclist Sharrows don't don't give that feeling of safety. So what can we do? Question five. If you have children, what is the primary reason they do not bike or walk to school? Uh, we do have an option of they do bike or walk to school. So if there was an alternative to this question, it is there. But, you know, when we talked with Todd and Dwayne is you know, much farther down the survey, we get an age read for the, the people that took the survey and, you know, less than 1% uh, took were under the age of 20. So we, we really, this is the perception of anyone mm -hmm. who has children, not the children themselves. So that's something we can take a look at when it comes to understanding the needs of, of students. Uh, in, um, 
Yeah, I, I guess just emotionally to hear about the 50% unsafe to ride bikes and then 46% not wanting their kids to bike because they're worried about their safety, you know, just emotionally that those are hard to see and hear and it's good to get information. And, and of course we have to think about their statistical relevance, but I, you asked about use, you know, those are, those are goals to change those things. Um, yeah. Yeah. And th this is, this is, this question led me to the other question we, I asked about the St. Bridget school of, uh, you know, mm. two, two town facilities, how, how well are new projects, designed to to really accommodate how people want to get there and um yeah jill i think you brought up was it with buses getting to the new proposed community center location that's a, that's a great question um you know if, if you're riding the bus how do you get there yeah i think i, I mean i don't know why they're doing it this way and i think the question about that building uh, why not just build it again but You'd think in 2021, when you're building a new recreation center, you'd make it accessible to everyone and public transportation. Uh, it's bizarre, but um, that's aside. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, question six, do you feel West Hartford does enough to improve conditions mm -hmm. for people who want to bike within town? You know, our majority says no. Is that okay for, for me to say that, Colin? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for today. <laughs> no, there's certain things you can add not, but you don't need to add anything in this one. You don't even need any math at all. This is... <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I'm just going to open some of these comments as we go through as a group. Not enough pedestrian bike crossing with bike walker controlled crossing lights. Also impossible to cra cross traffic there when heavier. It's a breeze in, on potholes on roadsides. Too many lanes on tr of traffic on streets. Um, you know, revenue to fund improvements for biking and raising people's taxes. Hmm. Narrow, busy streets are a challenge, so they are trying, right? I think maybe I take these very personally, but you know, um, I think this this question is is great, and I think these comments almost say more than the responses in percentages. So there's a lot we can pull from here. It's question seven. <coughs> I didn't want to jump at any questions on question six. Or any comments? All right, question seven. This was a uh, West Hartford Pedestrian Bicycle Commission initiative, which is we have assigned bike routes. They are on public streets. Some of them have off street uh, access, like Trout Brook Trail and different cut throughs. So th it's a mix. Uh, you know, you could be on the roadway, you could be off street. But we want to know if people are using these colored bike routes. We have the blue route, the orange route and the green route, and then and we have um, the responses here where 45% of, of um, those who took this question have not ridden any of the routes, and then 27% says they did not know they were assigned bike routes in town. Uh, you know, higher usage on the orange route, so something we could take a look at, maybe why the orange route is used more, maybe it has less on, on actual public roadways, more off. So something to take a look at there. Question eight, you know, 39% increased their bicycle use, 11% decreased and 50% stayed the same of those who took this question. So overall, please rate your perception of safety and bicycle riding in West Hartford. Uh, the response is here a little bit easier to read than the graphic. And then we have extremely unsafe. Uh, so on-street safety, safety through intersections, off-road, 
on trail safety. So extremely unsafe is in this row, uh, sorry, this column here, unsafe, safe, and then much less on the extremely safe except for um, off-road. Yeah, I think it's interesting that 50% just said safe and not extremely safe, but I, I think there's a lot to that. And then I'll pop open the comments. Turn your right on red, Alan. There you go. Um, Yeah, these, these are great in the morning um, <laughs> when you have coffee. Uh, you know, so we have there's some, some real feedback in, in these comments section. And that I, when you have a chance to read through these when, it, when it's up on the yeah. site, I definitely recommend it because there's, there's very real feedback in these comments. You also can come up with some ideas that are, are flanking that you wouldn't have ever thought of, you know, yeah. uh, new. And, and, and we need some fresh ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So then we get into walking more specifically. How comfortable are you walking on the streets near your home? Ken and Colin, can you remind me, the audience, so zero to 100, what's the min and max on this? So zero, I'm unsafe and or uncomfortable, and then 100 is, it's like sitting on my couch. I, I believe you, I have to go back, but I believe you're correct with that. Uh, okay. That, that's the scale going that way, so. Okay. So 100 is very comfortable for those, those seeing my screen. And Ken, I'm showing my screen, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, perfect. So 100, sorry, 810 responses on this. Um, the average was 77, so close to comfortable, close to very comfortable, I should say. What are your top three concerns with walking in West Hartford? Vehicle speed is a, is a real, uh, I think, you know, feeling unsafe and being unsafe is, is, is right here. Vehicles drive too fast. Safely crossing the streets. So what, what do we have for opportunities for crosswalks and intersection improvements? Lack of sidewalks or safe places to walk, across, walk off the street. Uh, lack of lighting. You know, something I didn't think about, right? Uh, but People use the streets all times of day. And also when you, when you talk about uh, facilities to, to accommodate all users, you know, we need to look at lack of lighting and maybe more specifically where that would be. And motorists not attentive of pedestrians. And then we have responses as well. Sidewalks have big gaps from tree roots and freezing. So if, if you do have a uh, sidewalk concern the town does have a resource for you to to raise that sidewalks uh, again a lot of people have fallen for this uh, person here you know bicycles signaling their presence to walkers vehicles running lights intersections without pedestrian lights Quaker and Boulevard yeah. Um, kids running, you know, bicycle riders and pedestrians. Uh, it would be cool if crossing buttons could have two modes. The pedestrian could select from stop in all directions or mm -hmm. cross with green light. Uh, you know, uh, uh, different perceptions are 
perspective there as well. All right, moving on. Oh, sorry. You know, what are your reasons for walking? General health and exercise, 90, 95% uh, of those who responded to this. Complete errands. You know, we know from studies that people who walk or bike to a business tend to spend more money and also uh, purchase more items. Social interaction with friends. I walk to bus stop. I walk to school with my children. I walk to work and others. Uh, no auto. So this person does not have an automobile. Uh, walk the dog is really, you know, something we didn't have in the survey. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot, you know, I read a lot of dog walkers took the survey too. So I think there's some information there, stuff to consider. Uh, person would rather drive to the center because it's quick and easy. What can we look at to make that trip quick and easy on a bike or a or by walking? Environmental people ride. So dog walkers are here for this question. Question thirteen. Open comment section. Do you have any additional comments or questions for the West Hartford Pedestrian and Bicycle Committee? There is 448 responses in here. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to go through all, but I will take um, some time to review these with everyone and see if anyone has questions or notes, things that we can take away. Um, this person, I think North Main Street could have some street updates similar to what was done on North Quaker, I'm sorry, North Quaker, uh, similar to what was done on Boulevard between Troutbrook and Quaker. Cars are driving too fast on North Quaker. Uh, I, I believe update can resolve this. Can you update the markings? We have a center lane marking, marked parking lane on one side of the street and designated bike lanes on the opposite. Hmm. And I'm going to paraphrase some of these. When taking the survey, I was considering main roadways, specifically Albany from Bishops to Steele and North Main from Bishops. To, these are main, these main roads are too narrow and traffic drives too fast. Traffic speed is a, is a reoccurring theme. Uh, that I picked from a lot of comments. Uh, while walking in West Hartford, we have, sorry, is this, is this killing your eyes? Let me know if this is too, this help. Colin, you're off mute, but does this help you better? It helps. Uh, walkers being defensive. Yeah. If people go into view and choose uh, fit to width versus fit to viewer, it's a lot better. In WebEx, Ryan? Yep. Yep. So can you repeat that again, Ryan? So go into the view menu, and by default, it's fit to viewer. If you switch that to fit to width, it gets a lot better, bigger and easier right. to read. Thank you. Uh, so drivers wait on crosswalks that stop signs, causing walkers to walk behind the car. Love to see more protected bike lanes. Uh, it would cost too much to change the busy streets to make it better for cyclists. They should go to parks and rec areas to ride. Narrowing streets will greatly slow down travel time. Um, I did ask Dwayne and Todd, right, Ken? We, we asked, you know, aside from travel time, you know, are they getting responses from motorists to increase safety? 
Um, we didn't have like a direct response at that time, but it was something that I wanted to know. You know, obviously we have a lot of pedestrian bicycle commission concerns, but our motorists saying this street is too dangerous. Can you slow traffic down? Um, I don't have a response on that. Quality of road, roads and potholes. Uh, protected bike paths in the center of Bishop's Corner. Um, this, this person um, was a pedestrian and had some interaction with dogs. You know, this is something we can follow up with. Need to concentrate on off road, make the reservoir safe. Uh, this person, there's a huge problem with dogs, is that that person's comment. Uh, Fern Street has become a high speed cut through for vehicles. I think you're over that way, Colin. Do you feel like speed has increased on Fern Street? All right. Uh, this one was interesting. Design sidewalks that are safe, pairs of folks. Um, so I was just going to quickly say, Fern, the speed, it's, it's, it does feel safer in the sections with the lanes. It feels just much more comfortable riding, walking, being. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to know if the cars are going faster because of that, I don't know that answer. Uh, just, yeah, just general perception. I would say it's, 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 a, it's a mark difference just in the awareness because of the, 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 the clear delineations. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I, it, it, reading through it, right? Um, it, it, I walked on North Main Street a few times with people and walking more with people and, and keeping a distance I noticed too that the, the sidewalks start to feel a little bit narrower. You know, if you're if you're trying to keep your space with someone you're walking with, and then yeah. you, um, you're up, you come approaching another group of people walking. I thought this was pretty interesting, just the sidewalk width um, as we think about post, you know, moving forward as well. A bike bridge over Route 44 connecting the two reservoir systems would be great. Uh, we we did talk to. Todd and Dwayne, and I guess, Ken, there was, just saying your name because I, I don't remember everything clearly, and I didn't hit save when I when I took notes at this one. The This was discussion prior. I think it dropped off the map for a little bit, but this comment brought that up of connecting the two reservoirs between Route 44, uh, either by some means, and, and looking back into that. Yeah, it, was, it got brought up at the meeting. Sandy probably remembers. It was a long, long ago sort of concept or idea where Canal Road comes across to. There's a grade that you could do a uh, could do a bridge, whether it it's it's fits fully or or how it would work. There's always been discussions, but yeah, Todd mentioned an under the road tunnel as a as something mm -hmm. that was they were thinking about at one point. I think the issue with it has been we're we're trying more to develop um, bike facilities for regular transportation, and you don't really see that one as a regular transportation mm. means. Well, it you know, depends on how you look at it because it connects with the school, it connects with Renbrook. So for children, it would be one, and also for the children for commuting to schools. Um, that aren't that. I mean, it, uh, it affords kids a way to go all the way from essentially from Farmington um, all the way to uh, way past Albany off road um, and then pull down into back onto North Main near, say, Northfelt or whatever. So, because it connects with Ferncliff and Ferncliff goes all the way across and, and down to North Main. So, Hypothetically, it could be used for commuters and for kids going to school, but it's a big project. Um, it's a huge project. Mm -hmm. 
I think you'd have to be committed to building the trails that are on either side because Canal Road, you know, yeah, you can ride on that, you can walk on that, but that's not really adequate. North of 44, you don't really have the trails that make those connections. You do, you have Ferncliff, which goes right from across the street all the way, really almost all the way to the end of, Hart of West Hartford. Uh, yeah. So it's not a trail, but it's quiet roads. What I gather too is when when they were throttling the amount of people that could go to the, the parks and the parking, you know, people were, even myself included, you know, trying to get to one park, you park at the other park and you have to cross 44, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at ways to, to make that better and more accessible both ways. Um, this one talks about speeding. Uh, cars will always be concerned. Uh, so consider ongoing education, sharing the walkway and paths. Uh, crossing Trout Brook Drive is scary, right? Um, signals don't give enough time for pedestrians. Uh, more paved off-road paved bike paths. There was a comment in here related to sidewalks on Albany Avenue. Why are there none between Mountain Road and Bishop's Corner? So there, there's a lot in these comments that I think we can learn from. Mm -hmm. A lot of no right turn on reds just from just from the quick early scans here. So motorist awareness education. Uh, what? How can we take a look at this feedback as we as we build a commission as a group? quicker cleaning of roadside debris and you know connectivity is, is a main a main thing to think about too and also off street bike pass or walk pass Denise I know when you first joined that was something you brought up too of, of more of these off trail off road um, connectors one thing I was thinking about too which would be pretty neat and totally um, concept plan would you know how do you get through the center off the streets uh, a, a bike path you know that is not on the direct roadway but maybe a different way to utilize the space behind buildings to get people mm -hmm. to play things would be pretty interesting to um, to accommodate just a, a different mode of travel uh, traffic that should be safe um, so that's it for question 13. 620 there's, there's a big item i want to get to prepare us for next week so let me see if i can move this down uh question 14 we asked for zip code question 15 we asked for age and we can see where the survey missed where the higher percentage of people responded but there there is you know our youth you know kids going to school um 20 to 30 using facilities differently than 30 and up. So we are missing completely zero to 15, 16 to 20, and uh, just a small small group of 20 to 30. So something Todd and Dwayne also recognized of education and getting more awareness on how those facilities are used. Uh, we, we have the gender identification question. Um, this person's human, which is fantastic. And then question 17, we asked where people, if you, if you work, please select the, the town, city where you work. 36% people that answered work in West Hartford. We also have a lot of Hartford commuters, uh, Farmington, Newington, Bloomfield, and other. And then there's responses in there as well to break through. 
So that's it. I wanted to go over for the survey. What's going to happen next? Ken will, if you didn't already, but um, we're going to have the survey up on the town website for the Pedestrian Bicycle Commission page, so everyone could have access to it, read the responses, read the results, and get an understanding of, of where, you know, how this survey did um, from from their opinion or from the commission. For us, there's a lot to look at. You know, I I'd encourage the commission to read through those comments. Maybe a couple ideas that bubble up to you of something you never thought about or a different approach that we can take a look at. Um, so next on the agenda, which I lost here. Times I miss paper. So next on the agenda, um, we did have, you know, actually from from this survey, right? We talked to Dwayne, we talked to Todd. What they recommend as next step would be a memo to town council highlighting the survey and what we've kind of mm -hmm. it's a surface read learned from the survey. How can the town take a look at the survey so far as results and just point them in general direction so they have a memo from the commission for awareness and and direction. Um, does anyone want to take on that memo creation for the town? It should only be about a paragraph, maybe two paragraphs, but does anyone want to take on that responsibility? So this this paragraph would would just basically state the 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 function. Would it talk to any of the um, results? Yeah, it could it could talk to some of the results. Um, you know, present it to the town. The commission has reviewed the survey. You know, please find the attached findings from the survey. What we you know what we found on a very um, you know, kind of high level read is, you know, safety is a concern, some, some notable moments within the survey that you'd want to present. When would you like to have that by? So the next town council meeting is in June. Um, so I, I would ask if, 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 if someone could work on it and have it a draft uh, by Friday or Monday, just a draft version of this is what we're thinking. And that way we can get back with feedbacks on that memo. I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm, it sounds crazy, but I'm actually traveling this week as, as, as an amazing as that is. Um, That's good. But I would be happy to be second eye if someone wanted to throw it my way right after and then we can get it to the group. Okay. Uh, Ryan or Denise? I think Paul dropped off. I can check with Paul. Any of you guys be interested in writing a memo on the survey to the town council? Yeah, you said it's a paragraph, right? Um, do we have that link to see the results? Is that the one from Ken? Yeah, and we can make sure you're... It's also a PDF out. Yeah, we can get that too, Denise, so you have it. And if you're up for volunteering or you're just asking clarifying questions. Uh, I see the PDF. Are all of the comments in there, though? I'm looking at it now. Not in the PDF. That's the drawback yeah. to the PDF. Um, yeah, I can do it. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. So Friday, Monday-ish, just a draft. You don't have to go crazy fancy, um, but just so we can have the town on behalf of the commission. So thank you, Denise. And Colin's got your second set of eyes. Yeah. If, if you wanted to use it that way, because I'll, I'll add two. I just know I'm out until Friday. Yeah. Where are you traveling, Colin? Oh, I, I, we're on a public thing, so you don't have to tell everybody. <laughs> uh, safe travels. Thanks. All right. Um, so what I had next was... looking at what we started back in March, which was priorities for the commission. I'm going to pause on this a little bit. Um, it is an agenda item. 
And the last we discussed, let me just make sure you can see my screen. Colin, I think you're still off mute. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. It, you might go a little larger for people to read it. Sure. Um, so priorities as a commission. I want to highlight a couple things that have already been in the works pretty heavily. So one, we have the um, We have the North, Me North Main Street Road Diet Trial. Uh, we also have this survey, uh, which we ha have feedback on now, which we're gonna take into interpretation and provide a memo. And then there's still some education questions, right? So we have, so here's what I wanna do as a commission is to, to look at this quickly today and jump back into it um, at a later date, but what, as a commission, should we continue to focus on for 2021 so we're not moving a whole bunch of things in, in different directions? So I think we have surveyed, you know, that is done. Um, it's a great accomplishment by the commission. North Main Street Road Diet Trial, this is, looks like it's gonna happen. Um, I, I have every confidence it will. I'm a pessimist, so I wait for pavement markings on the ground to say it's started. Um, so once that does, but then we have still a couple of things, you know, off street, let me go left to right. So youth education, broader education, police partnership is under this education umbrella. Facilities, we have a bicycle grid, North Main Street, off street, pedestrian, bike lanes, and then safe environment. So town council, safe environment pedestrian safe zones, and then safety awareness. What we can do next is take a look at education, facilities, and safe improvement. And for education, I think we still have a great opportunity to work with the Board of Ed and work on education. Um, I also met with Mayor Cantor to we re-engage a discussion about using a town park or facility and putting in, um, you know, putting permanent bike and pedestrian safety instruction course. So there's a couple other towns in the country and also in China and um, other countries as well that have like a, a, a at a park you you can have mock towns and mock roads and kids or adults can learn how to interact with a crosswalk um, road traffic how to how to use um, bike lanes and they can do it in a very safe space and bring people together so uh, mayor Cantor recommended i connect with helen rubino again and kind of re-engage that discussion so i think but that doesn't get into the classroom tra training, which is something we should look at. Uh, facilities, off-street bike parking, bike grid, and then safe environment. So here, right, um, I would like to pause on this because we do have a new kind of important topic that jumped up on Thursday uh, prior to the agenda being created. But any questions on you know, for, for next meeting, what I'd like to do is narrow, get rid of some of these columns here and just say, what are we going to do for, for education within schools? How are we going to connect with the Board of Ed? And then for facilities, how are we going to work on either off-street bike lanes or bicycle network or maybe just one item? So we have North Main Street. That's underway. But what else can we do? maybe even in conjunction with North Main Street, and then safe environment. How do we reduce, I would love to reduce uh, speed limits, but what can we do for safe environment? Maybe just one item we could focus on for 2021 and put some real good milestones that we can get traction on. Any questions on that? Sorry for all the background noise. My kids are having a meltdown. 
but if we could get like police officer or police participation in the meetings, I thought that would be an easy one, which I guess it turns out hasn't been, but given some of the feedback of the surveys around speed and safety and pedestrians, you know, making right turns on red and ignoring crosswalk signs, things of that nature, I think having a somewhat on the commission to hear that feedback and every week and take that back to the town would be good. Okay. I like the idea of the training, like a park with training and, you know, what you mentioned, Daniel, but I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but there's, you know, basketball hoops in towns that don't have nets on them, right? So if we can't keep nets and things like that on basketball hoops, I have a feeling like trying to get the town to build some kind of park or facility like that is going to be wasted effort and waste on our time. I don't know if anyone else feels the same, but... Um, <clears throat> I'd love to hear what they're doing with the Troutbrook Trail and where that's going, if that's been halted, stopped, continuing, you know, given everything that's going on today. That could help in the off-street pedestrian and bike lane. Yeah. Peace yep. and facilities. Yeah. Just yeah. a few quick thoughts. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. Um, yeah, what I can do um, is narrow down these a little bit more just so we have some real easy, not easy, but um, obtainable goals for, for 2021 within these categories. Um, the, the National Highway Administration said, you know, to for pedestrian and bicyclists, the best way to be prepared for the roads are um, practice and what you know what they found too is that having an uh, area designated for anyone to to practice being um, a pedestrian or bicyclist is on um, like a, a mimic roadway helps their safety and also the safety of, of those around them too so um there's a lot to to do that to ryan and i'll forward that to you as well um so what happened since oh sorry um what I want to cover is something new on the agenda is, let me stop sharing my screen here. Um, I sent an email to the commission on Thursday. And share content. So, um, can't remember who sent this. Well, the town sent it, I'll tell you that. This is a draft proposal for the town of West Hartford for a neighborhood street traffic calming program. It's 48 pages. It's really less than 20. The rest are appendix and appendices and different um, well, charts illustrating. As a commission, I would I'm going to send an email, but I ask that everyone reads this um, and provides feedback because the this is going to be a very big part of the town uh, going forward. And today is the tenth. The what I heard was that they're going to present this in June uh, to town council. So I'll ask that everyone on the commission reviews and provides any comments or concerns before have a date in front of me. I want to say May 21st. Is that uh, next Friday? Yeah, May. Let's give it May 23rd. That's a Sunday. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a weekend commissioner for sure. So uh, May 23rd. But this is a neighborhood street traffic calming program, right? So we look at the when we look at the survey. People say the streets are uh, motors are going too fast or it's not safe for me as a pedestrian or it's not safe for me as a resident um or it it's it's you know living in this infrastructure is difficult in some way we look at the traffic calming program and this is a draft so we have an opportunity to commission to provide input on this provide feedback and i'm going to go over just a few things real quick um did I not open the one I wanted to? There we go. 
So let me read to you the, um, the objective of the traffic calming program is to establish a syst systematic and collaborative process to evaluate, design, implement, and maintain measures that are effective in calming traffic and enhancing the neighborhood environment. Traffic calming measures are intended to accomplish uh, the following goals. Right? Encourage safe and appropriate travel speeds. Lower the, the frequency and severity of crashes. Improve driver behavior. Hey, hey Daniel. Hey, yep. Daniel. Can, can I jump in? I just, sure. I have a concern that the town sent us this just a couple days ago and want to hear comments from their ped and bike commission prior to presenting it to council and they really haven't given us enough time to do that adequately because we can all send you comments but we really should discuss it and um i i find that annoying and i don't think anybody from the town is really on our meeting today if somebody is like who can can speak to that it would be great but i don't think they are I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I'm sorry for breaking in. I just you're at the commission sort of a, this, this open break in. Uh, yeah, it to me it's a bigger issue than than what's listed as you know the goals and everything. It we we each need to take a hard look at this and then we need to discuss it in a meeting and we won't we won't have that opportunity given their timing, because I think they're meeting early in June, right? Before our June meeting. I don't have the exact date in front of me, but it is June. So that, that just is a big concern to me. I don't know if that bothers anybody else. No, it's, it's tight. And you're going to send this as a PDF over email. Is that the next way we'll see it? It is tight. He's, he it, said that we Go got ahead, it already. I think. Oh, we did. We already, okay. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. So, Sandy, um, what, right? So, to respond to the town, uh, we've we, we've had limited time to to review. Can we, as a commission, set up a call it a special meeting to? Uh, to review this, do we have to provide? You know, we probably could do that. I think we'd have to do it through the town clerk's office. So it was an official meeting. And I know from when we, we had any problems with meetings in the past, they're really tight because they have to have them televised um, with community television so that sometimes is the limiting factor in being able to to schedule an additional meeting what if so what if when this is presented to the town council if we were able to speak as a commission to the council on this so regroup, regroup real quick on it uh if possible and then at that town council meeting ask for a space to speak about this and that, that could just be we haven't had enough time to review i think the neater way to approach it would be to contact the the manager and duane and say we really appreciate receiving a copy of this and we would very much like to give our feedback to the council prior to them hearing it but you haven't allowed us enough time. Yes. But I mean, that's my opinion. So if anybody else agrees or disagrees, then we can decide what we want to do. I, well, I guess the question from a context perspective, are they just presenting it to the council to give them here's where they are and asking for feedback. So we're still in the, the loop in time or to provide feedback before it's 
does it need to be formally approved or is this just a new policy that they're letting us all know about? I guess, what's the context of this document? Does it need to be formally approved by anyone? And, and when is that process being engaged? Or Sandy, are they just sending it out to various people and telling them this is what it is? And I think it's kind of, I think it's marked draft, isn't it, Daniel? If you yeah. go to the first page, no, well, it's marked draft. draft here. I, I think it's kind of along the lines of something we discussed earlier, and I can't even remember what the topic was, but, you know, we are the Pedestrian and Bicycle Commission. This is an item that definitely impacts the Pedestrian and Bicycle Commission. Don't you, town, wish to hear our comments before you take a draft forward? Wouldn't Isn't that part of what our function is to help advise them on these issues? That's where I think we we want to try to carve out our our place. No, that's a very good point. Well, they do, right? But and that's why it was sent to us. So I think it, it's the window is short. And what I also want to make sure is that if we if we push for more time, is the commission getting, you know, are we providing feedback? Because what I also don't want to happen, truthfully, is uh, request for more time, and yet we, we don't provide anything back to them. So if if everyone can review and get, comments back to me by um, comments back to the group, I'm sorry, comments back to the group by May 23rd, then we can take a marker of we need more time or we're just, we're not looking at this closely enough as a commission. Because I don't, I don't think it's fair to ask for an extension if, if we're as a commission, we're not going to be able to to review this in entirety and, and make sure we're providing the attention we're saying we're going to provide it. So is May, you know, Sandy, if it's okay, uh, you know, and, and Ken and Colin and Denise and uh, Ryan, you know, comments on by May 23rd, reviewing the PDF, any comments, send it to us as a group. Um, I'll see what's available for a special meeting the week after, so the 24th to 28th, if we can connect as a group. But does that make sense for you? Because I, I feel like if we get feedback now and everyone takes a, a, a good review or a good cursor review, we'll know, you know, what we need to do and if we need to request an extension. Yeah, I can't see everyone with uh, sharing the screen here. Sandy can uh, yeah. fine if you want it if if everybody thinks that's the way to do it. Yeah. I'm faced with the alternative of disputing the process. Um I would say yes to that because I I just don't what Sandy, I I agree with not uh setting a precedent that this happens again. So maybe there's a commentary about that with our feedback. Maybe to, maybe to be more clear uh, is I want to know that we're engaged in responding to this traffic common program and providing it the attention it needs before requesting the extension for more time to review. And then with that, asking you know everyone to provide comments by May 23rd. I think that timing for comments is reasonable. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, just want to recap this really quickly. Uh, the traffic calming program. This is what they have for objectives. So reduce cut through traffic on local roads. Um, Reduce the need for police enforcement and enhance neighborhood appearance. Uh, 
couple things that I pointed out uh, when I read through it quickly is traffic calming measures. They have a table here, so to travel speed reductions, travel volume reductions, and then ped bike safety. And I'm bringing these up because I do think there's some heightened awareness, so we should review this and 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 really look at this. So these are traffic calming measures. Uh, they you know they do say in this they can produce unintended consequences. So eligibility I thought was a uh, you know we need to look at this eligibility, right? So truck streets or street segments meeting any of the following criteria will not be eligible for traffic calming. State highways, arterials or collectors, transit bus routes, um, it goes through more, cul-de-sacs, dead end streets, steep grades over 5%, um, and then posted speed limits greater than 30%, oh, sorry, 30 miles per hour. And then 85th percentile speed, 33 miles per hour or less. So these are not eligible for the traffic calming program, which I felt like really reduces where I'd want these traffic calming to, to be. And then they goes into the request for, for out evaluating traffic calming. I'm gonna jump to the procedural map, which is a little bit later here is a traffic concern is reported they determine whether it's eligible for traffic calming so again no is any road that's over 30 miles per hour uh, yes and then it, it goes through a scoring system which is covered in the above tier three they look at engineering then planning discussion and then they have community support petition if less than it goes through back to enforcement measures or educational measures. If it's greater than 75%, it goes into neighborhood in involvement, present traffic calming measures, again, a survey, and then there's a few outs. And, and then finally, if it passes a number of filters, design, construct traffic calming measures, follow-up evaluation issue resolved, yes or no. So I'll resend the email tomorrow morning with this in mind, with the date, you know, provide comments by the 23rd. Those comments are important. You know, if everyone gets comments earlier than that, then we know we really need to, you know, we know what we need to do, uh, which was either set up a special meeting, and I'll check with the town on that either way. So a special meeting, or we need to request an extension because this is, a, uh, a program that the town is going to adopt. So really important we look at this with a, a magnifying glass. Any questions on this so far, other than next steps? All right, uh, 850, uh, Sandy, I have really, really exciting to talk about this if you're Still, did we lose it? No, Sandy's still aligned. So, um, Sandy, uh, could you talk about the city of Hartford and what they did with this scooter program? Yes, I can. Um, through a CROG request for proposals, the city um, is moving forward with an e scooter share program. The scooters are link scooters. Right now, they're only available in the downtown area, so they sort of go putt-putt and stop moving if you go outside of the area. They'll eventually be opened up to the whole city of Hartford. Um, right now, there are 100 scooters in downtown. They've gotten a lot of good use. We need to start working a little bit on our messaging, a little better on our messaging regarding where they can be parked so they're not obstructing sidewalks. Um, but overall, it's been really positive. East Hartford is anxious to have them move into East Hartford. 
I think the provider heard from the Chamber of Commerce in West Hartford with interest, but I don't know that the town has reached out with interest at this point. Um, so that's the scooter program. It's a dollar to unlock, 35 cent a minute. So it's not a cheap, cheap way to get around. Um, they're fun to use and um, we think they'll fit in as part of getting people you know, shorter distances that they really don't need to use a car. And um, we're hopeful still that we'll have bike share at some point, but at this point we have the scooter share. And the reason scooter share comes before bike share is scooters have a different economic uh, equation. Like the company can make, make a profit with a dollar per ride and 15 cent per minute on the bike share bikes. Um, you need to have a big sponsor to make it work. It needs subsidy of some kind. So that's the scooter program. Sorry. I think they're, they're really cool, Sandy, because I had to go to the convention center a few times for COVID vaccine, and let, I, it looks like people are just grabbing them and having a fun time. Um, whether I don't know if they're going anywhere, but there's huge smiles <laughs> on the scooters. Um, so thank you. Um, you. You know, keep us informed of what West Hartford can do. I, I think there's, there's some interesting opportunities with this too. And lastly on the agenda is Tony Chirolis and BC Co, so Center for Latino Progress. He sends out emails. Um, there's great material in here if you're not signed up with BC Co. Hartford Bike Month, but I want to jump ahead on his email. Um, there's awareness about Hartford will be installing the city's first protected bike lanes on Weathersfield Avenue. And you want me to jump in on that, Daniel? To yeah, could you, Sandy? Yeah, okay. So there was, um, there were some horrendous fatalities on Weathersfield Avenue. So the city decided we really needed to do something. So using um, delineator posts and also parking to protect the bike lanes on the southbound side or the west side of the street, the bikes will be protected from traffic by parking. On the um, northbound side or east side of the street, there will be a painted buffer that will have delineator posts in it. And then the medians, where right now it's like a center turn lane and some painted medians, we're going to harden the medians so people can't just go racing up uh, the center lane. So this will all be installed this year. And we think it will make a big difference in calming traffic and also will provide an you know, a new kind of bike facility that will attract more people to use it. Thanks, Sandy. And lastly, in his email, if uh, road safety bill HB 5429, if you have an opportunity to take a look at that as it moves through uh, legislation in our state. That's it for, for new business. I don't know, is Bike West Hartford on the line? Ethan or Scott, are yes, you there? Yes, Ethan, I'm here. Hey, Ethan, Ethan thank sure. you for jumping on. Um, Ethan, yeah, the floor is yours for, for Bike West Hartford. I know we have some important things to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it's it's getting late, and but I appreciate the chance to, to talk, and um, I try usually try to do this at, at by, in a speedy way, but I'll, try, I'll do the best I can. No, but, take your time. Um, so anyway, Bike West Hartford is working primarily at the moment on this memorial uh, for Mary Ellen Thibodeau, which is going to be built at the opening to um, at the entryway to School for the Deaf, and we've raised uh, about sixty six hundred dollars so far, and uh, we think we need up to maybe 15,000, but we should be hearing bids this week from contractors. Um, I don't know whether, I don't know how many people on the commission are 
go to you know go to the Facebook page of um, the Bike West Hartford Facebook page, or how many of the people in the commission go to uh, to the Bike West Hartford site ever. But there's information about what we're trying to do on Bike West Hartford. Um, there's membership uh, possibility, which I don't want to shame anybody into this, but it seems like if people on the bike pedestrian committee aren't members of Bike West Hartford, which just really means at this point that you that you support Bike West Hartford, I would certainly invite you to go there and consider um, joining Bike West Hartford. And uh, Kevin Sullivan, who lives in Weathersfield, joined Bike West Hartford last week when I posted the uh, notice about the effort to raise money for this, for this uh, memorial and uh, some other people outside of the commission, people invest, uh, also join. So it's two separate things. The memorial is up, you know, obviously giving money and donating is up to every, every per, everybody. It's their own personal, uh, you know, it's all personal, but I do invite you to take to go to Bike West Hartford, take a look, consider becoming a member of Bike West Hartford. And if you, and if you feel strongly about the memorial, then you're certainly invited to donate to that. And, um, we're excited about that, and then Center Streets is the only other thing on our our agenda right now. Hey, can I, can I jump in? Can I jump in, yeah, Ethan? You can, you, yes, um, mm -hmm. I think it would be really um, proper and correct for Daniel to send a link to the Bike West Hartford webpage to the larger list, you know, the larger list you have, Daniel, of people interested in bike and ped topics. Probably a lot of people, they get confused over time. They don't know the difference between the Ped Bike Commission and Bike West Hartford. And so this would be an opportune time. The email could mention, the the memorial could mention membership and mention center streets and just direct people to the website because I don't think we can count on everybody just going. Right, unless you unless you follow the you know unless you see it on base if you're a Facebook follower of Bike West Hartford you'd see the post but otherwise you might not know about it. Um, so. Uh, yeah, Mary Ellen Thibodeau, if you don't didn't know her, she was um she was inspirational and she showed everybody who knew her that one person can make a difference and uh she taught me that and you know, I'm not one to step up and do things and it seems like the only time I step up and do things is when somebody else doesn't step up first. And uh I'm a little concerned right now uh, that the town, I, mean, I think it's fantastic that the town is doing things without us, but I'm concerned that the town is ahead of us now. Or when I say us, I mean those of us who are, you know, interested in these in these uh, you know, endeavors and efforts. So, you know, it's getting kind of strange. The town is actually ahead of us and we're not ahead of them and taking the initiative to um, to make these things happen and to choose things and really go after them. And that's what Mary Ellen taught to do. And uh, that's why we're doing a memorial for her. So, and then there's some so some great new people in town who want to be involved and want to have a say in meetings like this. And uh, there's not there, you know, here we've had, a, we're at two hours for this meeting and there's been no time for anybody to, um, you know, who might be on the line to, uh, have something to say. I don't know. We need to somehow or other get more done in an hour and a half than we're doing right now. But I don't usually stick my nose into all this stuff like I just did, but um, I'm just feeling a little bit, um, I guess I'm a little bit impatient with what's going on. But so please do go to Best White Bike West Hartford and I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you very much. Ethan, thank you. If, if you could, um, you know, I have on the screen, I don't know if you can see it, but bikewesthartford.org where people can go. If you could send me like a summary for Bike West Hartford and the, the two items, which, you know, which are Mary Ellen's donation, um, I have on the screen here as well, a memorial for, for Mary Ellen and also 
Bike West Hartford and becoming a member and why that's important. And that way I could forward that to the larger group. Um, I certainly, you know, 100% understand it's a two-hour window. It's tight. Um, we have a lot to cover as commission, you know, and, and my my role as chair is really helping to narrow down how we become more effective and be ahead of the of the town items. So I ask for a little bit of, of patience, um, but anyone on the line, you can always email me. It's reachdanieljohnson at gmail.com. Uh, again, that's reachdanieljohnson at gmail.com. And that's a great way to hear from everyone and we are taking steps. So I, I hear you and, and thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, that's the end of the meeting. It's 9.02 p.m. It does go quick. Um, any questions, again, reach out to me, reachdanieljohnson at gmail.com. And look forward to following up the commission on emails as well. Ethan, you know, thank you for, for Bike West Hartford. All right, have a great night, everyone. Thank you.